Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, and I'm going to show you in this video how I make my Tylo's homemade gum paste or flour modeling paste. And uh, so this paste is a very versatile paste, can be used for mostly for flours, but also can be mixed with fondant or sugar paste to make 50-50 paste and uh, can be used, of course, for other things like cut out letters. You can use it in different other applications for cake also. So as far as the recipe goes, um, if you go to nicholaslodge.com, um, once you get to nicholaslodge.com, you're gonna click on recipes and templates, and there you will find a PDF downloadable uh, file of the gum paste recipe, okay? So let's get started. So in making the paste, we first of all need to do what we call mise en place. So mise en place in pastry terms is basically everything in place. And it means we're gonna scale off and have ready all of the four ingredients that go into this particular recipe. Now this recipe has four ingredients. So first of all, we have 125 grams of fresh or pasteurized egg whites, okay? Now, um, when you're using eggs, Basically, you can just use, I'm just using, um, you know, just regular eggs, all right? Now, the reason why um, I scale my eggs, why I don't just say, tell you four large eggs, because, for example, in each country, eggs are graded differently, like between Europe and the United States. They're going to vary if you are using free-range eggs or eggs from a neighbor or from a farm. They're going to vary a lot. Um, also, like, basically, with free-range chickens, the, um, actually how they're fed, um, a higher protein feed will enlarge the yolk, which makes the egg white smaller. But as I said, so I'm going to use um, egg white. So these are large white eggs. Um, you can also use brown eggs as well. Now, alternatively, you can also use uh, pasteurized eggs. These are, um, for example, here in the United States, we call these safe eggs. And basically, this is a process, and they have a pea stand on the top of them which means they're pasteurized in the shell. So this means there's no potential for any, obviously, salmonella or any other bacteria or things on the eggs because they're pasteurized in the shell. And these are a little bit more expensive, but basically because this is an uncooked recipe, um, this is also really good for like eggnog, it's good for obviously ice cream base and things like that. But um, you can also use pasteurized liquid eggs. So you can buy in the grocery store, in the supermarket, you can buy liquid eggs which are pasteurized. But, so when it's basically pasteurized, it means there's obviously no chance of salmonella. Now, when you use the pasteurized liquid eggs, it's going to be a little bit runnier. It's also like you can also make this recipe as a vegan royal icing by using aquafaba, which is basically the liquid from the chickpea. You can use that and you need to boil it to basically kill any bacteria. And then you would then put the 125 grams of aquafaba, your liquid egg whites, or as I said, pasteurized egg whites. Now, when we, um, when we scale the egg whites, all right, so I'm going to use my scale here. Um, so I want to do 125 grams. And I always scale in grams because it's much easier, it's much more accurate. Now 125 grams is basically going to be about um, four egg whites, just to give you an idea. So if you had a dozen eggs, you'd be able to do large eggs, you'd be able to do obviously about three batches. So I'm going to tear out my uh, to zero. I'm using here just a container. You can use a plastic cup or whatever. I'm going to take my egg whites. So this is uh, my egg whites. So this is actually four large egg whites I have in here. And I'm now going to just sort of start to add the egg whites to the here, here. Obviously, this is going to just come through here. But just don't dump them all in because it's going to be more than you actually need here. All right, and I'm just going to get, because we want just 125 grams. And then what I normally do is you can either use a syringe or a pipette. I just suck up some egg. In the, and I usually will just finish off the last little part with the syringe. I use this technique a lot um, in teaching my students, like at the French Pastry School, when we're doing, seeing that's a really good way to just use your syringe, and that's basically going to be your egg whites, okay? But, uh, and also if you're, if you are pouring eggs and they're a little bit, I've broke these up a little bit with a fork, but you can also use a scissor. When you're pouring, if you, if you get to 125, you can also just cut across with the scissor, and that automatically cuts the egg white to stop it going in. So I have my 125 grams of egg whites, all right? Um, these can be refrigerated straight from the fridge, which obviously here in the United States, we refrigerate our eggs 
Uh, in Europe and many countries, you buy your eggs at room temperature. So it doesn't matter whether they're at room temperature or refrigerated. Um, basically, you're just scaling off 125 grams. So that is your liquid, but this also means that it doesn't matter where you live in the world, we have members Obviously, of my Flower Pro Club, that live in countries all over the world. I have students from my Craftsy Blueprint classes all over the world. So whether you're in Brazil, in South Africa, in England, Australia, 125 grams is 125 grams. And so that's why I'm a little bit more scientific when I do this. All right, next thing we're going to move on to, all right, the next ingredient is 725 grams plus 100 grams of powdered sugar or icing sugar. So again, here in the US, we call it powdered sugar. In a lot of countries, it's called icing sugar. So icing sugar here, so I'm using here um, what we call here in the US 10x sugar, all right? You see how on the packaging it has 10x, all right? This is a larger from a sort of wholesale club, more like a bolt pack, all right? So this has actually got seven pounds or uh, just over three kgs. Um, now 10x sugar mainly means it actually has been sifted 10 times in manufacturing. When you buy regular icing sugar or regular powdered sugar, what happens is that uh, it is basically sifted six times. It doesn't say it on the package, but if you just buy a pack or a container, a box of just normal icing sugar or powdered sugar, normally in manufacturing it's sifted six times. 10X means it's been sifted 10 times. That's what the X stands for. So what it means is it's a lot finer texture. So um, if you're using just regular powdered sugar or icing sugar, um, you'll need to sift it a couple of times, all right, because you want to make sure you get out those extra lumps. Now, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a um, just a plastic bowl. This just keeps, and I have here a gallon size zip top bag, all right, and I'm just going to tear that out to, to zero, okay. So remember, you put your bowl on top, then you press the tear button, and it will take it back down to zero, okay. So I'm going to take my, my sugar. And what we're going to do here is going to just going to take the sugar and then I just want to just scale off 725 grams. Now a lot of you are used to obviously using digital scale, but again, it's just um, here in the United States, a lot of people bake with cups. So then we've got 725 grams of powdered sugar, icing sugar, okay. So I'm going to take this and I have this in a zip top bag. This is just the easiest way because when you put this into the um, mixer, this is the easiest way to be able to put it into the mixer, okay? Now, um, then we, we need an additional 100 grams of um, powdered sugar. Now, this additional 100 grams is what we're going to actually use when we um, take it out of the mixing bowl, and this will usually won't take all of this, all right? So, you're just going to, you won't use all of this additional 100 grams. I just want to have about 100 grams at hand, okay? Now in different countries, like for example in the UK, there is a sugar you can buy, more of a specialty sugar called bridal ice, which basically is a sort of, was used traditionally a lot on wedding cakes with uh, royal icing. And again, it's like a very, very fine sugar. So we have 100 grams of sugar here. Now, um, you know, if you're buying obviously sugar like this in a large bag, just wanna make sure you keep this obviously well sealed up and put a, um, you know, we see a seal on there. Um, you can also heat seal this, but of course you want to make sure it's kept in a dry place so it doesn't get lumpy, all right? Um, you of course can also just buy one kg or two pound bags of sugar. So of course then that will be, um, it won't be lumpy. You just use it straight from the bag. But as I said, if you're in an area where you don't have like a super fine sugar, like the 10X grade or a fine sugar, just basically just sift it a couple of extra times. Now, um, Again, in my Flower Pro Club, we have some members from, for example, from New Zealand. So one of our members was having some, obviously, um, issues with the sugar, like clumping. And also remember that a recipe will vary the sugar, permitted sugar. Some countries put starch into the powdered sugar, some countries don't, okay? So there are lots of variances. Also, some sugar comes from sugar cane, some from beet, and some is mixed, all right? But generally, as I said, this is the amount you would use of your sugar. All right, now um, then we move on to the next ingredient, which is going to be tylose. Now tylose, it says here 30 grams, and in parentheses 27 grams. And on here, um, in the Flower Pro book, it says less tylose can be used if you don't want the gum paste to dry as fast or if making dark colors. 
So basically your tire lows is the one thing that is variable. Now the recipe that I'm um, showing you is formulated using Confectionery Arts International tire lows. This is the one that I originally uh, developed this recipe for. There are many, many companies that sell tire lows, like for example, Rainbow Dust. You know, this is for example, File and Holdin, which is in the US company. This is an Italian brand. Um, this is uh, uh, Cal Java. This is um, another Italian brand, but AUI, and then this is again another Italian brand, okay? So these are all different, and see, as you can see, some companies will call it CMC. CMC stands for carboxymethylcellulose, all right? And basically, CMC is an additive that is used in a lot of food products. Um, it's used for thickening uh, things, so like salad dressing, a lot of soft drinks um, are used for that. But um, in application in cake, we use this for, hand, for making the Tylose paste, we use it for edible glue, we use it to modify sugar paste or fondant. Now, the Tylose can vary because um, the amount of filler will change a little bit. So if you're using a different brand, you might want to contact the sub manufacturer and ask them if they have a recommended amount to use in a batch of gum paste. And some of them you're gonna find are gonna be a little bit strong. Um, so you might need to cut back. So what I suggest you do is make it to the recipe, see how it does for you. And if you need to cut back on the Tylos, next time you make it, you can cut back on it. Now with the Tylos, all right, we're going to put the Tylos. So again, I'm just gonna use a little container here. Just zero that, zero that out, all right. And so we want 30 grams of this. I'm gonna show you also a colored, um, how to color the gum paste in the mixer, which is a good tip when you're doing a whole batch and you need like bright pink or you need green or whatever. So I will be showing you that in the uh, next segment. So when I do that, I've actually already scaled my ingredients off for there. So I've actually scaled that off at uh, 20, uh, 27 grams, okay? But also if, you work in, if you're working in air conditioning, if you live in an area, if you're working with us at the AC on all the time, um, or you live in a very dry climate, uh, like here in the United States, you live somewhere like Arizona, which is very dry, or parts of the Mediterranean, parts of obviously Middle East and things, which are a lot dry temperature, of not so much humidity, you might wanna cut back on your tire lows. So it just depends a little bit on your own environment you're working in and also how your hands are. If your hands, I have students who have very dry hands, they suck a lot of moisture out of the paste. So there's lots of variances on, on that. But as I said, try it to the recipe, see how you get on with it, then you can adjust it as needed. But the only thing that you would need to adjust would be the tire lows powder, okay? Nothing else needs to be changed, okay? Um, and so that's the Tylose powder. And then I already have scaled off my, um, my vegetable shortening, my fat here. And so I'm using here Crisco, all right? So Crisco is obviously the most popular vegetable shortening. Uh, in the UK, you have obviously Trex, we have white flora. Um, as I have said in some of my videos and classes, um, Crisco is nice because it does have a higher melting point than, for example, some of the European brands. And you can buy this in the UK, um, like companies like uh, Tesco, Han Tesco Online have Crisco, comes in sticks like butter as well. Um, but this, as I said, is also you don't have to keep in the fridge, you just store this at room temperature, okay? Um, and that's the uh, Crisco. So I have 20 grams of vegetable shortening Crisco white vegetable fat, which is said Trex. Now you can also use like in, um, when I teach sometimes in certain countries, I use solid coconut oil like Kofa um, in Australia and places like that. So you can also use a solid, but it must be vegetable, not animal based, okay? So what we're gonna do, so we have our ingredients, so we have our mise en place continued, I'll finish now. So we're gonna place the egg whites in a KitchenAid mixer bowl fitted with a flat paddle or scraper bowl attachment. Now, um, this is the KitchenAid paddle, all right? It has a silicone um, scraper on it. Um, and obviously I use and support KitchenAid products. I'm working here um, in, with a glass bowl, so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Um, but of course, usually, um, like for example, in a kitchen, in a professional kitchen, like at the French Pastry School, of course, we don't have anything glass. Um, but I just usually use this for videos because it's a little bit easier for you to see uh, what is going on in the mixer, okay? So I'm just gonna bring in my here. 
Now, I'm um, going to talk a little bit about flavoring, all right? So this, this is one of the types of way you can flavor royal icing. Because if you're going to use, um, which is basically what we're making to start off with, when we make royal icing for, say, flooding cookies, but also when we're making uh, gum paste, for example, for cut out little daisies to go on, say, a cupcake or on a cookie or pressing paste into, say, my flour pro filler mold, you might do little forget-me-nots on, say, a petit four or on a cupcake. It's nice to have a little bit of flavoring in the gum paste. Um, when you use powder, so this is a company called More Than Cake, and they have lots of florals. So for example, rose. So if you were making gum paste roses, you can actually flavor your gum paste to make it taste like roses. Um, and these are powders, but they also have some like strawberry patch. They have one called Lemon Tree, uh, which will give your, um, basically your gum paste like a lemon flavor or a strawberry flavor. And as I said, this is a rose one. So if you are gonna use those, what you would do is you just would take a little bit of powder, I'm not going to put that in here because obviously I'm just for there. But you just take a little tiny bit of powder. It is quite strong. And you just would add like, for example, just a little pinch or like an eighth of a teaspoon uh, with, with uh, into your powder sugar, into your icing sugar. All right. Or you can add it later on. But if you're using powder colors, uh, powder flavors, you're generally going to add them at this stage. All right. So you just would put that into your sugar. That's not going to make any difference because obviously we adjust it at the end. Now, the reason why I like the paddle attachment with the um, silicone, it helps to sort of scrape down the bowl. This is also great when you're making cakes because obviously you can use this to scrape your cake batter into your cake tins or pans. And, uh, but as I said, if you don't have um, the paddle attachment with the silicone, you're just gonna need to scrape it down a couple of times. Now you always use the paddle. You never ever, when you make royal icing or gum paste, you're never gonna use the whisk attachment, all right? Because it's gonna include too much air into it. And what we're basically making here is a soft consistency royal icing. So what we're gonna do here is gonna place the egg whites in a KitchenAid uh, bowl fitted with a flat paddle or scraper attachment. Turn the mixer to high speed for 10 seconds to break up the egg whites. So our egg whites will go into your mixing bowl. So they will go into your mixing bowl here. We're going to then, going to just lock your, and I'm just gonna turn this up. So we'll make a little bit of a sound because of the paddle, because there's really not any body in there. So just gonna put this up to 10 just for a few seconds, just to liquefy, break up the egg whites. Then I'm going down to stir setting. Okay, now on stir setting, I'm going to now lower speed and add the 725 grams of sugar. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to just sort of slowly add, and you see this makes it very easy to do. You could also just scale into a larger bowl and then just use like a spoon or a scoop to scoop it in, but generally speaking, um, I like to use a kitchen. Of course, you can just wash this bag out and reuse it or just seal it up and use it next time because it doesn't really have to be even washed. You can just keep it for next time you're doing it. So we're just going to add the sugar. Just do that slowly. And of course, um, you know, those of you in the UK, a lot of you have um, Kenwood mixers or some other European brands as well. But uh, as I said, um, I generally use in the KitchenAid one. So we're just gonna just start to um, add this. And you see the silicone scraper is going to scrape this, basically it's gonna just scrape that down, all right? So you're just gonna mix this up. Now then once, um, once we've added the sugar, we're gonna turn it up to setting three or four for about two minutes, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just use in a little rubber spatula or you can use a bowl scraper. Just make sure there's no sort of sugar because sometimes you'll have a little bit of sugar come up to the top here. Also just get rid of any sugar that's on the top of the Obviously, do this with the mixer off, never, obviously. Okay, and then, so what we're going to now do, I'm going to turn this up. So on my KitchenAid, I'm going to go to about three to four, okay? Now, if you do have an older mixer, um, you might find it's going to be a little slower than newer. This is about five years old, this particular model here. So they are a little faster. So three up between three and four, I've got this on speed three and four and you're gonna mix this up for about two minutes all right now during that two minutes um, we're going to um, so you're gonna obviously if you needed to um, obviously you're gonna get your plastic bags ready you're gonna obviously have your and then if you're gonna color it in the next segment I'm gonna show you another batch which I'm going to color so if you were gonna obviously you can now go and get your colors and obviously and then while it's mixing up as you'll see when I do the next segment you actually can add the color so the mixer will do all the work for you and this technique is very useful when you're doing a 
dark color like black or um, very dark pink or burgundies, colors like that, reds, um, to get the mixer to do the work for you. So just gonna mix this up for about two minutes, all right? And then after two minutes, we're going to check the consistency of this. So we're gonna check the consistency of the, um, of the icing. Now you can double this recipe, all right? So in the mixer I'm using, all right? So this is basically, um, um, this I could make a double recipe. I generally use, um, I have like again at the French Pastry School, we use the eight quart commercial KitchenAid. So just gonna mix this up for about two minutes. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is gonna just unlock this, I'm gonna check the consistency. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for like a soft peak. It almost looks a little bit like a meringue, okay? So you can see how you have this sort of soft peak on it. It should look shiny, but it almost just looks like meringue if you're doing like a lemon meringue pie, all right? So of course, if this was royal icing, which a lot of people still use, traditional technique of making royal icing with um, with using fresh egg whites, of course you would have uh, more powdered sugar, icing sugar in here, and of course you'd mix it up generally for about five minutes, all right? But we don't want to overbeat it, and that's also why we're not using the whisk as well, okay? Now, um, so in, in the uh, instructions here, it says make sure the mixture is a soft peak stage, it should look shiny like meringue and the peaks fall over. Then if you're a color in the entire batch, you add the color at this stage, and it also says also, white gel color can be added to make a brighter, whiter gum paste. So if you're making white flowers, you can also use a gel color. This is like a mirror color. This is a white powder. This is the rainbow dust powder. So you can either use a powder, okay? So you can either take some of the white powder or you can take some of the white gel. And what you can do there is you can put just a two or three, about three or four drops in there and just mix this through. Now the gel color or the powder, so if you were using powder, I'll show you that as well. This one here, it's open. But so you just would take a little bit, one or the other, but with white powder. But this is titanium dioxide, okay? So titanium dioxide is used in toothpaste and it's used to make things uh, basically opaque. So what they're not also whiter, okay? So this is um, added to, if you want to make white gum paste, all right? So if you're wanting to, to stay white and you're gonna use it for, let's say, white Phalaenopsis moth orchids, or you're gonna use it for, um, for things like white lilies or gardenias, um, that will make it a brighter white. Because especially when you put sugar flowers onto a fondant or a sugar paste cake, the fondant or sugar paste commercial brands like say Renshaw, already have titanium added to the fondant. So it would make your flowers look a little bit off-white, all right? But as I said, you don't have to do that. And of course, also, if you were using other flavoring, all right, so if you were using other flavors, like for example, um, these are some of the Nielsen Massey rose water, okay? You have here um, peppermint, you know, so like for example, peppermint, um, I generally would use like around the holidays, so if you're doing little cut out snowflakes with gum paste, of course you can also just add a little bit of that to a small amount if you don't want to do the whole batch. Orange blossom water is really nice, or also things like oils, like lemon oils and different flavored oils, lemon oil, orange oil, you can add those. Generally, um, if you're doing that, you just would use a pipette, all right? So again, you just would take a couple of drops of lemon oil or some of the rose water and just add it at this stage, all right? Now, it doesn't matter that you're adding liquid because we're gonna adjust this, obviously, after we have the tylos in. But as I said, you can flavor it. You know, generally when we think of sugar flowers, you don't really encourage people to eat sugar flowers because they have wires and stamens in. But when we're using sugar flowers or when we're using gum paste for a said application on cookies and cupcakes, uh, then, you know, of course, it's nice to have a little bit of flavor in this. So we're going to, um, then we're gonna turn the mixer to slow setting and sprinkle the tylos in over a five second time period. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my tylos, okay? So I'm gonna have it on slow setting. And I'm just gonna just sprinkle my tylos in over about a five second time period. Now this is going to really thicken up this mixture, okay? And then you're gonna turn this up to high speed just for a few seconds. And you see how that's totally changed the 
you see how now it's very stiff peak, you see? All right, and, um, but that you haven't done anything wrong. And um, now I have had questions from students, you know, can you make this by hand? Um, basically what you would need to do, you can use, um, it would be easier to use even a little hand mixer, but when you get to this last stage, you'll need to just mix the, um, mix the tylos in uh, just, just gently and then scrape it out and just knead it in on the table. So, anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my bowl here. I'm just gonna get rid of my mixer out of the way for a second. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is going to take my um, ice in here. And see, so you can actually use even like the paddle, you can actually use that just to get the icing out. Or if you have a bowl scraper like this, I generally just take this off. Now, when I do the colored batch, which you'll see in the next segment, I'm going to, I will have gloves on at that stage because obviously if you were making this black or navy blue or burgundy or hot pink, it will stain your hands, okay? And then I'm going to just take my bowl scraper here. Okay. I'm just going to take this out, put this on the table. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you can do this directly onto your work counter. I'm going to take some of the powder sugar, the icing sugar from the 100 grams, and I'm going to put that onto the top here like so. And then I'm going to take my vegetable shortening. Literally, I'm going to take my 20 grams of vegetable shortening, and I'm going to pop that onto my hands. So I'm just going to pop this onto my hands. It's a little bit messy to do, but you're probably going to get a little powdered sugar, ice and sugar over you. But you're just going to just, so that will actually stop this paste sticking to your hands. And we're just going to just work the sugar in. And you just keep working it in. Now, it will, you see how it's sort of like quite, you want to give it a good knead, all right, that's very important. And you're just going to use as much sugar as it takes to get a nice pliable but soft paste, all right? So I'm just going to start to work some sugar in. All right, so once you've got some sugar in, so you can see I've used approximately about half of the sugar. Now, if, for example, you'll see when I make the colored batch, if we colored this, you're going to be adding really like gel color. It's going to make it a little softer. But also, like, it depends if it was raining outside, um, if it's more humid, all of those things kind of change, obviously, how much sugar it will take. What we're looking for, a little bit like almost a bread dough, it should have a spring to it. And you see how when I pinch it with my fingers, you see how my fingers come away cleanly, so it's not tacky, but you see how it's got a little bit of a spring to it, all right? So you see how it's, it's sort of, as I said, when you pinch it, it wants to be soft but not sticky. So you won't use all of the sugar and then you're just going to just give that a knead. All right, so then we're going to just take the sugar. So I'm just going to clean up my station and I'll be right back to show you how we do the next step. So in your instructions, it tells you that uh, then you check by pinching with your fingers, which I've done here. And then we're going to place the finished piece in a zip top bag, then place bag paste in a second bag and seal well. So you, first of all, you know, obviously this is going to make nearly one kg, about two pounds of paste. So of course, um, if you're not going to be using large amounts, you could divide this into say six or eight or even 12 smaller portions, okay? Because I'm going to talk a little bit about this, you can freeze this, so that means you're not using, just keeping one big bag of paste. So. Um, most of the time, I would just split this into two, so you're just going to just divide this into two. Now, as I said, we'll be a little bit, but as I said, you can see how it's, it's uh, not sticking soft, but not sticky, okay? Um, now, you can wrap this in plastic wrap, all right? So plastic wrap is a good, this is also good, um, like when you have colors, if they're all going to go in the same bag, because it won't cross-contaminate then. So you can just put, use some plastic wrap. Just make sure you get the air out of this. And also, if you are going to freeze this, this is definitely what I would recommend you do. So just wrap this in cling film or in plastic wrap. Okay. 
Something else you can use is like press and seal. Um, this is a good product as well. I use this a lot uh, for, as I said, all different types of things because it's a little bit sticky. So, so again, you can take press and seal because this will actually sort of stick to itself. Okay, so you can just roll this up. And the reason why, if you're going to freeze it, you would do this and then put it in a Ziploc bag, because when you thaw it from being frozen, you'll potentially have moisture in there, in the bag, condensation. So that stops the gum paste getting sticky if you have the plastic wrap or the press and seal. Now, you want to, um, you know, obviously uh, date this when you made it, obviously what it is. So Tylo's gum paste, I made this obviously on May the 9th. And um, so you're going to put this into bag like this and of course you could do get the air out of it so divide this between two and then of course you could put these two smaller bags like in a gallon size bag um, or the other thing you can use is like fondant containers you know, plastic container you know just sort of like something you keep dry goods in and stuff like that so this is sort of how you would make your Tylo's gum paste now in your um, instructions it tells you that uh, you mature the gum paste for 24 hours if possible before using, keeping in a cool environment. All right, now, for example, here we're in May in Atlanta, we have obviously air conditioning on, so it's cool in the environment I'm working in. If you were doing this in the winter time, especially in areas where you have like heat on, just pop that somewhere cool, all right, somewhere cool in your house, but you don't have to refrigerate it at this stage. You want to just mature it in somewhere cool. Um, and as I said, but uh, if you uh, just find somewhere cool in the house, so just gonna leave that for 24 hours to mature. And then um, once it's matured, uh, you're then ready to use the paste, which I'm gonna be showing you a little bit later on in this video. And uh, so when you're ready to use it, you cut off what you need, and then you add a little bit of shortening to this. And also, for example, if you wanted to just color a little bit of this, like 24 hours tomorrow, I could cut off a little bit of this. If I was, say, making calla leaves, I could just cut some off, and I would then work a little shortening and some yellow color in just to need the color in at this stage, okay? So that is how, um, how we use the gum paste. Now, um, talks in here, a few basic things, all right? When not in use, the paste needs to be stored in the refrigerator. Um, before use, removed from the refrigerator, allowed to come to room temperature, need a small amount of shortening into the paste. So let's say, for example, like you've made this today. Um, this is actually a Saturday I'm making this on. So tomorrow I would be able to use this to make whatever flowers I wanted to. And then I was making flowers for a wedding cake for next weekend. Uh, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so then on Wednesday, when I finish with the paste, I would just pop it in the fridge if I wasn't going to be using it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, okay? Because it contains fresh egg white, that just preserves the extended life of the shelf life on the product, all right? So when you're not using it, keep it in the fridge, but it is fine out at room temperature for the two or three days or however long you're working on your sugar flowers. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, you can also store the paste vacuum sealed with a food saver. So like, for example, when you, I mean, the next segment is showing you how to make colored paste. So let's say, for example, you make a batch, um, which as I said is approximately one kg or about um, two pounds of paste. So let's say you make it in a bright pink for peonies and you finish your peonies for your wedding cake. You don't have any peonies coming up. The best thing to do to, to store it is to use a food saver. This is a vacuum sealer. All right, so again, you can date this, and then of course, when you put this in the freezer, the advantage of this is, now this was actually made in 2018. I just took it out a few hours ago, so this has been in the freezer for two years, and this would be fine for another two years. It's gonna be perfect. But also, the advantage of using a food saver, a vacuum sealer, when you thaw this, as I said, this has been out of the, fr the freezer for a couple of hours, you can see it's starting to soften on the outside. But what it means is, when I take this out of the bag, when I cut this, there's going to be no, it's not going to be sticky because there's no condensation. And that's why, as I said, if you're going to freeze it, I would definitely recommend wrapping it in plastic wrap and then putting it into a Ziploc bag because that will also stop you getting the paste sticky because the plastic wrap or press and seal will protect your paste from getting sticky inside there. And um, so that's a great way to store it. Um, and then you uh, can also, it talks about with much air removed and wrapped in plastic wrap, cling film like this, the paste will keep approximately under refrigeration for about six months and you can keep it much longer by freezing it, 
okay? Um, if you are freezing the gum paste, you want to allow it to mature, so you don't put it in a freezer straight away. That maturing process is very important, all right? It's just like cheese and wine and things. It only needs to mature for about 24 hours at really cool room temperature, okay? And then you could then put what you don't need. So let's say, for example, you don't need that much. You could put one of these in the freezer and just keep one out uh, for working with, all right? Um, and you can also take it out of the freezer, you can thaw it, you can then uh, basically refreeze it without any problems whatsoever. Okay, the sugar is acting really as a preservative here, okay, so just like when we make jams and preserves, it's very a similar thing. And then um, less tylos can be made if you don't want the gum paste to dry as fast or if making dark colors that typically dry the gum paste out, black, dark green, purple, etc. So when I come back, I'm going to show you how to make a batch of colored gum paste in the mixer. This is a great tip when you're making, uh, you need a lot of green, for example, for 500 leaves, so you need a lot of pink for peonies, and uh, this is a great way to achieve especially dark colors. So I'll be right back. Okay, so when we are coloring a batch, now the advantage of making the mixture um, colored is that first of all, it's going to save you time, it's also gonna save you having to put gloves on and kneading the color through, but also most importantly, it's not gonna change the consistency of the um, actual gum paste, all right? Because just like when we work with fondant and sugar paste, if you take white sugar paste and color it red or burgundy or navy blue, you're putting a lot of color in, it's gonna change the consistency and make it a little bit sticky. So that's really where the huge advantage of coloring it in the mixer. But as I said, alternatively, but if you're doing pastel colors, I would just generally just knead it into the paste um, once you've made it. So anyway, so this icing is at the same stage, so I mix it up for about two minutes, all right? and then I put it on to stir, and I'm gonna take some pink. Now, you can use like gel colors, um, this is like Americolor, color, um, paste colors, you know, these are generally called paste colors like Wilton. Um, this is a Chef Master brand, uh, this is a Sugar Flare English one. Um, gel colors, these are the Pro Gels. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just put the color in, and I'm going to put some pink in here. All right, so I'm gonna, gonna put some pink in. Now you wanna make it just a little bit brighter than you want it to end up with. All right, so I'm just going to work this through. So if you were making, let's say, some peonies and you wanted to make a... So I'm going to put some... And then you can, of course, sometimes when you make, you might want to use another color in here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of... Uh, this is like a purple, like a sort of a violet color. Because that will, that will do is if you add a little bit of that. And I'm not putting a lot of that in, but that will just, just give you a little bit more of a, a magenta color. So I've just put a little tiny bit of the purple in there. Just gonna put a little bit more. Just gonna squeeze that out. There we go. Just couldn't put that in with a toothpick. So I just want a little small amount of that. See, and then that's got rid of that sort of bubblegum pink and made it a sort of a little bit more of a magenta sort of color. Again, if you need a little bit more pink in here, can do. And I use, um, when I'm doing colors, so if you go to nicholaslodge.com, you'll be able to, this is a Renshaw color chart for color in fondant, all right? But what it is, there's 84 colors on here. But actually, of course, this is made to use with, say, pink fondant and then purple fondant, like 10 parts pink to one part one. So really, that's what I've done in my mixing, okay? So you wanna just put in approximately 10 times of pink and then you're gonna put in so like if you put in like a teaspoon of pink and then one tenth of a teaspoon of purple, that will give you that sort of magenta color, you see? So, um, but, so the, though this is a fondant coloring chart, so there is a PDF downloadable version of that on nicholaslodge.com under recipes and templates, okay? So you see, you mix the color through, and of course, like, you know, that would be perfect. Like you, there's also more than cake, do a peony fa uh, powder. So you could also just add like a quarter of a teaspoon of the peony powder to that. And then of course, then you just would um, scrape this down. So I'm just gonna scrape this down to make sure I get all my color. So generally I would just mix this up, but remember you can use your paddle as well to do this. And you just wanna make this just a little tiny bit darker than it will end up, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm then going to add my tylos, all right, to this. So just gonna do that the same as you did before. Just gonna add your tylos. 
But see, it would take a long time for you to do that manually to color this, all right? So then you're gonna turn this up to high speed. Now remember, Tylos, I only put 27 grams in here. So especially if you're doing like colors like black or very dark purples, dark burgundies, colors like that, I would generally recommend you use, um, as I said, less Tylos in the recipe. So I'm going to, um, going to now just scrape this out and then just basically knead this in the same way. Um, so I'm going to just do that now. And so then when I come to the next step, uh, you'll see this ready to be uh, stored. So here you can see this is the finished paste. So this is now ready to just leave in a cool environment and leave this for 24 hours before we use it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of making Tylo's gum paste and we'll have fun making this. And just remember the only thing that's gonna change potentially would be your Tylo's based on brand, okay? And then the icing sugar, powdered sugar you need in at the end would be dependent on the color you're making and also humidity levels as well. But as I said, everything else will be the same. So good luck and sweet wishes until next time. This has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. See you real soon. Bye-bye.